If Dr. Robotnik ever unleashed a world of terror upon the world of Sonic collecting, it is the Sonic Archive books. I'm Austin's Animals, collecting all things furry. If you were lucky enough to start collecting the Sonic the Hedgehog comics since its inception in 1993, then you are blessed with long boxes of gorgeous comics of varying quality but beautiful art nonetheless. This comic went on for over 20 years, and as expected, the continuity got a little confusing for new readers. See, Sonic stuck by the book to its canon for the majority of its publication and new readers needed a fast way to catch up with older comics. Sega and Archie's solution was the Sonic Archives. What would have been 26 mini books that compiled the first 100 issues, easy to get for new collectors. I assume these books sold very well because I find them all the time at secondhand bookstores and while thrifting, and I always buy them. I can't ever say no to you, Sally. Dear God, I love Princess Sally Acorn. These books were actually my introduction to collecting Sonic comics. I grabbed them right around the time Archie cancelled the entire series, as I figured that would be a good excuse to finally read all 400 issues, knowing that the series was over and complete, I couldn't fall behind. And that was a good choice, I really liked the Sonic comics. But soon after reading these comics through these tiny compilations, I began collecting those original back issues, and was totally blown away by how much of a better reading experience it is. I mean, let's state the obvious, the artwork is blown up and bigger, so you can see details you might have missed. But it's not just size, there are other factors that make the archive books complete garbage. Let's just start with the coloring. Here's a scene from the Sonic Archives. Now here's a scene from an original issue. I don't have the same issue to line up, but you can see how much different the colors are. So take a look at Sally in the original comic, this is just a flat picture of Sally, and then this is the one from the archives. For whatever reason, they decided to give the entire comic book this sort of faded tint to it, and they gave the characters like some sort of bizarre sheen so they're like shiny looking. It's really terrible. Sally's bright, striking brown pink fur just goes to this straight faded pink. It's god awful. I mean, is she supposed to be Amy? It looks terrible. She looks like a fried pork chop. It's obvious they didn't have access to the original artwork, they just had a bunch of JPEGs and had to sort of clean them up. It's embarrassing because I know Archie could have done better, because they did. The Sonic first collection was their first attempt at reprinting older issues. And for whatever reason, maybe they had more of the source material to work with, they actually did clean up the colors. They even recolored Princess Sally to closely match her TV show counterpart since her first appearance was based on only concept artwork and not accurate. It's a pretty solid recolor, and it still captures the bright, bold colors of those original issues. Yet with these collections, they just went with this god-awful color scheme. It looks horrible. Another thing I don't like about these comics is the covers. Yeah, the artwork is pretty, but it's the texture. I'm not sure if you can tell on this video, but the first volume has this really nice glossy effect. And then everything afterwards was printed on this cheap material that's all like scratchy and it gets dirty. It makes the book not enjoyable to hold in your hands, it feels gross. The final thing that really breaks these comics though, is the lack of supplemental material. Seriously, these comics are bare bones, they just have the stories. But the original printings of these comics had a lot more than that. First, they had advertisements, and yeah, usually the ads are annoying that break up the pace of the comic, and reading a collected graphic novel is an ideal way of reading a story arc with no interruptions, but Archie Sonic was different. The majority of the ads were for Sega games. We see the Sonic characters even like address and talk about the ads. They'll yell at you to buy more comics or games. And hey, there's Knights. There's all sorts of great Sega history here. And it gives the comics a lot of context, as it tells you where it is in the Sonic timeline, and they give new readers a rough idea of where we are in the greater sort of timeline of Sonic games. 
Also, the ads are just cool. Here's a super awesome ad for Sonic Adventure. Just seeing something like this gets you hyped to read more, because it means the Sonic Adventure story elements are about to come to play. With the collected issues, all of this charm and history is gone. Another thing the ads did was they offered a nice break from the story. Okay, so some of the Sonic stories can get pretty weird and intense. So they would often break it up with ads and just goofy comic breaks. There were these really fun moments called off-panel where the characters would sort of talk off-screen. Sort of like the, uh, if you remember the scenes in the Pixar movies, the outtakes? It's not like the Pixar outtakes. It was a nice break from the story. They also featured tons of letters and feedback from the fans and fan art that was mailed to them. It was a really great way to see the Sonic fandom and community before the internet. And it's a great time capsule into what Sonic was. It's really charming, and it does offer nice breathing room between the story beats. Maybe I'm just crazy, but I think these reproductions should have had some of the original fan mail, fan art, definitely those off-panel scenes, and other advertisements and Sega stuff included. I think without it all, and just stripped to its raw story, the Sonic the Hedgehog comics lose a bit of their charm. So am I really salty about what are obviously budget comics aimed at 8-year-old boys? Yes. Yes I am. Because they phoned it in, and they knew Sonic fans would buy anything that had all blue boy plastered on it. I'm not saying I'm some sort of issue comic collecting purist. As a matter of fact, my favorite Sonic comic ever is a compilation called Sonic the Beginning. A collection of the first few issues that's so damn good it deserves its own video retrospective. All of the original artwork is beautifully blown up. It's printed on clean, crisp paper with these colors that give Scott Shaw's original artwork justice. There's also a really sweet intro by Michael Gallagher reflecting on the history of the comic. It was a cheap comic that retailed at just 11 bucks. So you're telling me this comic was 11 bucks and the archives were $8? So for $3 less, we only get a fraction of the content at half size with poor printing? What really sucks about all this is that these archives were the only reprint of the first 100 issues, and Sonic comics are getting really, really expensive. Seriously, Sonic prices are nuts, and I never thought any comic series would pick up like this, especially Sonic. These volumes were only affordable and legal, way for new readers to catch up on the blue blur, and the quality is total crap. Oh, and the worst part? The last two volumes were cancelled, leaving us just shy of collecting the first 100 issues. Damn, Dr. Robotnik really did win after all.